Sean McVay says Joe Nopum is one of the Rams' five best offensive linemen. Are the Rams expressing interest in trading for running back Jonathan Taylor? And we've got news and notes from the Rams' joint practice session with the Denver Broncos. That's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Ramley? And welcome to another episode of Locked On Rams, your daily podcast covering your four-time champion Los Angeles Rams, free and available wherever you get your podcast, Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're also available over on YouTube, so if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Locked On Rams YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and let us know. Do you think that Joe Nopum is one of the Rams' five best linemen? My name is Doug McCain. My friends call me DMAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. I've been covering LA sports for over a decade. The Lakers for outside, the Dodgers for Dodgers Nation. Now the Rams for Locked On. And as always, I'm joined by the Rams pre-half and post-game show host for the Rams flagship radio station. ESPN 710 LA. He's entering his eighth season covering the team. The people's champ, Mr. Travis Rogers. You can follow him at Travis Rogers on today's show. We've got news and notes from the Rams joint practice session with the Denver Broncos. Are the Rams really interested in running back Jonathan Taylor? A little smoke there, but we begin with what is going on with Joe Noteboom. Is he one of the best five linemen on the Rams? Will he start? But first, this episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and sign up with promo code locked on to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Now, Travis, lots to get into this show, a loaded show. So yesterday, Sean McVay, he told reporters when he was asked, is Joe Nopum one of the best five linemen on the Rams? He said, I think he's played that way during camp. He was going to say, and so we want to be able to find that five and the way that fits together. And it's hard to be able to see that if we don't have people out there. And so all we can do is continue to work with the guys that are available. But he would go on to say that he's been super pleased with the camp that Joe has had. I think he's played outstanding at tackle and guard. When he gets back, we'll have to figure it out. All right. What is your read on McVay's comments on Joe Noteboom so far this training camp? Well, what he didn't say is yes. What he didn't say is, yeah, he's going to be one of our five starters. What he didn't say is Joe Nopum is a big part of what we're going to be doing going forward, right? That you, What he said is, well, if, then, this, that, maybe this, or that. There's a lot of moving parts in there, and I don't think that Sean McVay says anything haphazardly. I think that Sean McVay is very strategic in what he says. I think that you know he's very good at talking without maybe revealing a whole bunch of actual information. Uh, I also think that Sean McVay is a rare coach that tells you the truth mostly when it comes to these things. You just have to know what to listen for. You just have to know what it is that he's saying. Joe Nopum can be one of the five best. He may be one of their five starters at the beginning of the season, but very clearly they are not committed to him to the way that they used to be because the injury is kind of nebulous. It's kind of hard to put your finger on. No one's saying exactly what it is. And there seems to be some speculation on whether or not he was going to be a tackle, whether or not he's going to be a guard. There's a lot of stuff going on there and no one's fully committed to it. I think that there is some smoke there. I think there might be a small fire and I wouldn't be shocked if Joe Nopum is not part of this team moving forward. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I've been sniffing this out for weeks now. It just feels like something is a little off. I mean, Joe yeah. Nopum has been dealing with an undisclosed injury that McVay has confirmed is not related to the Achilles injury that he suffered yeah. last season. He did go through individual drills yesterday, but he didn't participate in team drills. Ankrum continued to get the first team reps there at right guard. And a couple of things I look at the right guard position. He's played a combined 12 snaps at right guard in his college and NFL career. When he's played there in his NFL career, he did not look great. And to me, it just feels like they are shopping him at the very least. Now, Will they trade Joe Nopum? That's a whole other conversation because you're late in the year. You're late towards the regular season. You have to make something happen. But if you look at the salary cap and the dead cap implications, Nopum is due $15 million next year. And the big question is, 
would they pay him that amount to be a right guard? I mean, you're paying him to be an above average left yep. tackle. I think that if they could move off of him, they could get some late round assets, maybe a late round pick, maybe some help along the defensive line. I mean, if you keep him this year and cut him before next season, it's going to cost him $15 million in 2024 dead cap. And the organization has basically gone to great lengths to prevent that. So the option is trade him now, take that $20 million in dead cap hits, and then try to get those assets and try to just move on and kind of bite the bullet. Well, you know, again, at the, at the risk of being a broken record for our everydayers, what is your goal? What are you trying to get done? Are you trying to be a team that competes for a playoff spot this year? Are you trying to win the NFC West? Are you trying to get into that playoff picture and see what happens? Or are you taking a strategic long-term view at, at continued success, right? That Because if you're taking the second thing, right, if you're thinking, okay, how are we going to be good in 2024? How are we going to be good in 2025? Moving him might make some more sense, right? Because of all the things that you just talked about, draft capital and everything else. If you're trying to be good right now, you have to keep him. Because look, what what sunk this team last year? What took this team from the defending Super Bowl champions who had, a, at least it felt like at the beginning of the season, a chance to run it back to a team that was 5-12, and 12, to a team that couldn't get anything done? It was an offensive line that had no depth. It was an offensive line that couldn't keep Matthew Stafford protected. It was an offensive line that couldn't create holes for their running game. It just was an offensive line that did nothing because of injuries. And maybe Joe Nopum's underperforming what your expectations were. Maybe he's not your left tackle of the future, the guy that was going to take over for Andrew Whitworth the way that you wanted him to. But he can play in the NFL. Right. And he can he can fill a role if you're trying to maybe he's not a starter. Maybe you're playing him out of position at right guard, but it's not a debate on whether or not he can play in the league. He can. And if you're trying to win, you're going to need him at some point or another. What are you trying to do? What are your goals and what is your timeline? I think that's far more important than what they feel about him as a player in this very moment. And that's why I think that. It's twofold. I think their goal is to be competitive with what they have, but also it's to look towards 2024. And that plan was to avoid the dead cap for next season. When I always say what must be done eventually should be done immediately. And the goal is if you move off of note boom and you really bite that bullet this season, it could put you in a position next year where it's a little more clear what your picture is moving forward. Yeah. But I think, too, there are some positive as far as winning this season. We saw the depth. They were decimated by injuries last year. And look, I think that people like to minimize and diminish Joe Nopum because he's so injury prone, because he really hasn't been that heir apparent to Andrew Whitworth. I mean, there was a discussion. Okay, maybe he passed the torch at some point. We saw him fill in for him there in that division round game, and he did a nice job at it. But really, that, to me, is pretty much his value at this point. He provides that value as a swing tackle, as a spot starter. He's shown versatility. He plays the premier position at left tackle. And Travis, I'll tell you this. It takes one team, one yep. team to want him, and then you start having a serious conversation. And I think, like I said, that's a lot of money to be paying a swing tackle, to be paying a guy that is your guard when you paid him to be your left tackle. It, it is. And sometimes, you know, the, there are sunk costs, and he costs what he costs, and you got to find a place to play him, even if it's not where you wanted him. I, I, I'll kind of leave this on a, on a slightly higher note. He's played well at the NFL level at the left tackle position before. Not last year. He wasn't good. We haven't seen him much there this year. Um, there are other options there. AJ, uh, AJ Jackson, uh, Tremaine Ankrum perhaps as well. But this is not, the, again, it's like, it's like a pitcher in baseball. Like if I've seen you have some continued success and get some guys out, I'm a little less likely to move on from you so quickly because I know it's in there. He's played well at left tackle. When he filled in for Whitworth, not replaced him permanently like last year, but filled in for him, he did a pretty good job. It, you know, it, we, we didn't talk about him, and that's the ultimate goal of an offensive lineman to never have your name called, right? That's, that means you are doing a great job. It means you're not getting beat. means you're not getting called for penalties. We didn't talk about Joe Nopum very much a couple of years ago, so it's in him. He has that game, whether they can get it out and whether it's at tackle or guard, time will tell, but he can play football, and if they do end up holding on to him, I don't think it's the worst. Even if they're maybe pay, overpaying for what he's become, he can be a valuable asset. Exactly. He can still help this team. I'm just saying, I do think that this is an organization that they're going to explore all their options. They are going to 
do their due diligence. It does almost feel like unhappy couples in Los Angeles trying to stay together because the rent is so high and you want to try to make something happen and make something have him provide some value. But I also think, too, when you look at the way his contract is structured, it does seem like they were interested in kind of running it back last year and this year. And that's why the cap hits were low. It's almost yeah. like they were expecting to deal with that dead money in year three unless he was playing like a top-tier lineman. And he was earning that 15 to $20 million cap hit for next season. And, of course, you can also restructure it to $15 million. So I do think they were strategic in it. But I want to get your thoughts, too, on DeMarco Farr and Andrew Whitworth. Basically doubling down saying okay this guy is one of the best five linemen that and they do anticipate him starting on this team well here, here's what we know for sure right rob havenstein is going to play right tackle we know that uh steve avila is going to be your left guard you know that joe nopum doesn't play center so there's three positions right you got two spots left is he one of your next two best guys maybe maybe not Right. When you got Ankrum, you've got Shelton. If, if Shelton isn't your starting center, if that goes to Brian Allen, if you've got AJ Jackson, you've got, you know, there's some traffic in there. So those guys obviously are plugged in. Those guys know what they're talking about. If they're saying it, I believe it's probably true. But I don't think that you just say, oh, he's clearly one of your five best because you're really only talking about two positions that are open, and that's at right guard and left tackle. See your best left tackle? Probably not. Is he your best right guard? probably not. So we'll see how that shakes out over the next uh, days and weeks. Yeah. Another important thing to know too, is Ankrum. He's going to be a free agent and Nopu might be your best option. So basically yeah. having for this year, next year for an additional, a million and a half and next year for 5 million. So it does seem from a value standpoint, as long as he stays healthy, I mean, that's the big key too. I hate to point this out, but maybe the organization is saying, okay, we start with no boom. And he most likely is going to get injured mm -hmm. based on his track record. And then Ankrum will get his opportunity. And Ankrum, he gets injured like two plays into the season That's after his first okay. start. So, oh. like you said, we got to forget about what happened last season with these injuries. Throw, but, throw it away like it never happened. Throw it away like it never happened. But, yeah, at the end of the day, it does seem like we are trending towards seeing Joe, no Joe Nopum possibly get his starting job. I think Ankrum has deserved that opportunity. But this Rams team also, I would not rule it out that – they explore a trade if the right deal becomes available. And speaking of trades, it seems like there's a little more smoke to the Jonathan Taylor rumors linking him to the Los Angeles Rams. We're going to get into that next on Locked on Rams. All right, buying tickets to go to your favorite sporting events, your favorite concerts, the best shows that you're trying to see, it should not be a stressful activity, right? You should not be worried about what it's going to cost you and where you're going to get them. But right now, with killer deals on last-minute tickets and best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you're going to have with game time, right? Flash deals, last minute tickets, images of your seats, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. That's why game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. You don't have to plan months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, a comedy show that you want to see in the theater, and much, much more. Game time guarantees that you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in the same section or row for less, game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. Download the game time app create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On for $20 off. Download game time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And we are off and running here on Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We're also available over on YouTube. So if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Locked On Rams YouTube channel. Join the party. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button and let us know. Do you think the Rams should trade for Jonathan Taylor? So here in our second segment, Travis, we have to circle back to this topic because a beat reporter for the Colts he linked the Rams to him. He said the Rams have expressed interest in running back Jonathan Taylor. And yes, this isn't Rappaport or Schefter, one of the big guys. I'm not saying it's hashtag trust me, bro. And that's our sources or something like that. But still, I mean, he is a accredited, a credentialed member of the media. So I have to give him some credence. Well, keep in mind, so am I. 
So, so take that for, <laughs> for what for what it's worth. Um, no, but but yeah, look, he, I, I don't see it. I don't see a path to where the the Rams are, are are a Jonathan Taylor away from achieving what it is that they're trying to achieve this season. But I'm going to stop short of saying no way. I'm going to stop short of saying not in a million years because. The Rams are aggressive. When the Rams see something they like, they go for it. When the Rams think that there's a move out there that can make their team better, they let it rip, right? I, and I'm just going to go off the kind of the top of my head over the last few years in the Sean McVay era, uh, the Les Snead era, and what they've done. Sammy Watkins becomes available, boom, they go get him. Dante Fowler becomes available, boom, they go get him. And then there's the big ones like Jalen uh, Jalen Ramsey and then Odell Beckham Jr. and Vaughn Miller. Now, the Rams were in a different position in this point where they were competing for division titles and championships, and this season may not be that. But never say never with the Rams, right? They are aggressive. If they see a player that they like, they will at least go investigate and see what the cost is, what the benefit may be. Um, I don't think Jonathan Taylor will be on the Rams this season, but I'm not going to say never because the Rams don't operate in a world where never is a part of their vocabulary. Exactly. And you brought up some fantastic points in that that has always been the MO for this Rams organization. You get the disgruntled superstar for another team, the Fowlers, the Ramseys, and you bring them to LA. And that was yep. the case back when they traded for Marshall Falk. And it's basically the reverse Eric Dickerson, right? He ends yep. up going to the Colts after being with the Rams. So yeah, it'll be very interesting to see if anything develops from this. I do think that if you are his agent, that was really my first thought was okay it's the rams you always want to plant that story the rams are linked to everyone because their resources because their market size because of how aggressive this organization is so there's that aspect of it as well and then for me personally yeah i mean my question is can he rush the passer right can he fix this defensive line (laughs) the same token like you said special players they don't come around often we know that the running back position that has been devalued they are a dime a dozen this year but jonathan taylor when he's at his very best He's someone who is a game changer. There is no question about that. I know I said yesterday that you don't buy a Porsche when you don't have a functioning toilet. Hey, give me the Porsche and I'll use the gas station down. I'll use the restaurant at the gas station down the street, right? I mean, look, I want to drive a Porsche, right? I want to, you know, get a drop top on Sunset. Look, I, I would love to have a Porsche, right? So, yeah, it is a little enticing. And I think, look, I mean, do you consider trading Cam Akers and having him included in the deal. I mean, I think everything has to be on the table if you're a smart organization. To say that you're not open for business, say for a very select few of players, I think is rare in this league. I would just make a suggestion that hotel lobbies and grocery stores are a better option than a gas station. But that, that's just me. That's just my personal He's research. driving the Porsche, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, when you pull up to the grocery store parking lot to use the bathroom, you're going to be doing it in style. I, I understand. I, I'm not even mad at you. I'm, I'm okay with you doing what you're doing. The, the re- yeah, Yes. I, is he attractive? Sure. Does he block? Uh, no, he doesn't play left tackle or right guard. Does he go get the passer? Is he going to get add eight sacks to your bottom line? No. Can he cover uh, DK Metcalf and Debo Samuel and, and these sorts of guys? I don't think so. And these are the problems that the Rams have. These are the areas of need that they have. Uh, is Jonathan Taylor better than Cam Akers? Yeah, he, he is. Is he a lot better than Cam Akers when Cam Akers is at his best? I don't know. Yeah, but I, I mean, the, the gap to me for the cost isn't certainly there. Like you mentioned, that position is not nearly what it used to be. I think the Rams have a pretty good running back room. If Cam Akers is the guy that we hope he'll be, I, I'm bullish on him. And I know that that's risky because we've seen what happens, uh, you know, when he's not ready to go. Uh, I, I I, sure, you could use him. It, it's a, it feels like a fantasy football thing to me, much more than a real football thing to me, because that's not a position that the Rams need to be better at right now. That's a great point. I mean, it does feel like such a luxury, and we know that how many needs that this team has, but I also think, too, that if they think that he can be a part of this core moving forward, and they're willing to pay him. That's the other thing, too. Like I said yesterday, it feels like you will be paying twice, because you have to give up picks. Also, he's going to want a new contract, how yep. that contract be structured. I mean, 
Could it be a deal where it's 11 to $13 million per year over five years? Or is he going to get closer to the $20 million he's closer to pursuing right now? So I think that's the big question. But I think, too, when it comes to less need and this Rams organization, well, the, di- the difference here is you're probably not going to have to include a first-round pick. And we know the FM Picks era, it was about giving up that first-round pick. Now, if you can give some a package that amounts to that, because we know the Colts won a first-round pick, but if you can give multiple seconds, multiple fourth round picks, well, the third round picks, something in that range, maybe it's something. But I do feel like if you're this organization, it almost feels like a gambler who's lost everything, all the money, right. his house, his wife, and then he proudly announces that they've quit gambling, right? <laughs> At that point, I mean, if you're this Rams organization, I think it's time to just take a deep breath. You can makers, you got it. Kyron Williams, you got Zach Evans, you got Ronnie Rivers, you got these running backs I think can do an adequate job playing that position. You see what you have in them this year. You see if this team can stay healthy, and you don't really just go after that shiny new toy. I think this is a opportunity for them to show some restraint when you have a big-name player available. If they give up a first-round pick for Jonathan Taylor, it would be a huge mistake. A huge mistake. You're finally on the precipice of being able to get an impact guy at a position of need for a luxury item. It just, it, it would be, if you can get him on the cheap, sure. If you're paying a premium price for something you don't have to have, it would be a big mistake. I would hate to see him do that. Exactly. That's the number one thing. If you can get him when it comes to value, because let's not forget too that Jim Ursay he gave them him the opportunity to go seek uh, to go search out his own trade. Right, he can look for his own trade partners and try to find the destination for him. Of course, Los Angeles is very attractive, but we don't know what's in his mind. But I will say the similarities there: Erie Marshall Falk he wore twenty eight right. Jonathan Taylor, he wore 20 with the Colts. We saw that that started the greatest show on turf era. They would go on to win a Super Bowl. So I think it's very enticing, but I do want to see this organization be smart about their first round picks, be smart about their cap space. We know that next year you're already over 50 million. You got all those resources. It feels like Les Need is kind of driving home from Gamblers Anonymous and he sees a casino or something. <laughs> He's just tempted to go, I'll just play one hand. Just go with, play one hand, right? So a lot of for some reason, I just want to see what I have in Cam this year and run with this group yeah lotto's not gambling i'll just buy a few of those everything will be fine no one will ever know (laughs) exactly right it's all fun right but in our next segment though we've got an update some news and notes from the rams joint practice session with the denver broncos that's coming up next here on locked on rams And welcome back to Locked On Rams. Thank you for making Locked On Rams your first listen every single weekday, free and available wherever you get your podcast. Locked On Rams, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And a special shout out to our everyday listeners. We appreciate you listening to every episode, watching every episode. And you can be an everyday listener too. Join the club. Membership is free and you won't miss a thing about your Los Angeles Rams. Now, here, Travis, in our third segment, we got an update from Denver, the joint practice sessions leading up to the Rams' third and final preseason game this Saturday. Yep. And the most important one to me is that Cooper Cup, he took part in Monday's practice and he followed up with an appearance on Wednesday. Also, made a nice grab going up against Patrick Sertan. Apparently, that was a very fun battle to watch. Sertan, one of the best in the league, and he made a really nice catch on him, just burned him, and it looks like he's going to be healthy. My biggest takeaway is he looks like he's going to be ready to go for week one against the Seahawks. Yeah, great. That's really good news because, look, the the formula for them to win games this year is score a bunch of points, right? And, and that, At the risk of being painfully obvious, they're going to have to score a lot of points to win games because I think they're going to give up points. I do not think that the Rams are going to win a bunch of football games this year, 17 to 14. I don't think there's a ton of 20 to 17 victories in their future. I think if they're going to win games, they're going to win games 31 to 28. They're going to win games 35 to 30. This is a team that is going to have to outscore their opponent as opposed to, hey, let's grind out possessions and let's find a way to burn clock. Let's find a way to keep the opposing offense off of the field. I don't think that's what they are. They're going to be an offensively explosive team, and Cooper Cup has to be a part of that. If he's not right, if he's not healthy, as good as Matthew Stafford can be, he's not as good as he can be if Cooper Cup's on the sideline. If number 10 isn't involved, the Rams are in deep, deep trouble. If number nine's not involved, they're in deep, deep trouble. And of course, if 99's not involved, they're in deep, deep trouble. So seeing him out there competing, beating a player like Sertain, who's a terrific defensive back, is meaningful for sure. 
Absolutely. And I think for me, it feels like they want to see him put together back-to-back days of on-field work, and they're going to clear him completely for all activities. And I think that all signs are trending to him being back in the mix because he hadn't practiced since August 1st dealing with that hamstring injury, and it's huge. Well, that like I said, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that you can tell me he's fine. That's great. But until I see him play, I'm going to assume he's not. And he played. And, and, he, and then he played again the next day or the day after that, and he's looked pretty good in those things. So my my anxiety of him maybe having something a little more severe than they were letting on is is lessened seeing him out there because, you know, I, I, I've been doing this a long time. I, I've heard everything is fine. Shohei Artani had arm fatigue a week ago, and now he's getting his second TJ. Don't tell me. Show me. So now that we got to see Cooper Cup out on the field, I feel much better about it. Exactly. You always have to take everything with a grain of salt the size of the rock of Gibraltar this time of year. I always tell, tell people, have your training camp, your preseason goggles on. When you read any of these reports, it's very different when you see it in in-game action, preseason action versus regular season action is extremely different. Yeah. It's like AAA baseball to the show, right? A significant gap right now. Another big note, Darion Kendrick, he returned to practice. Logan Bruss, he tweaked his ankle in Saturday's preseason game against the Raiders, but he was back at yeah. practice. Good to see him. That looked like a pretty ugly little role there, but he's back. Give him a lot of credit. He's really trying to gut it out and try to carve out some type of role for this team. And Akella Witherspoon, this was a little concerning for me. He was held out of practice. He felt a groin injury, McVay said. McVay said he wanted to be smart on that with any soft tissue stuff. So feels a little more preventative or maybe there's something here. Yeah, m- maybe. Anytime you're held out, I-, I get a little skeptical for all the reasons that I just said. I want to go back to something you said a, a second ago about Logan Bruss. I, it looked like he broke his leg in, in that game against the Raiders. That that looked awful. That that le- that ankle just didn't roll. It went all the way to the turf and then back again. And you see a guy sit down on the cart like that immediately after. I was thinking, oh my gosh, here we go again. This is a guy that got hurt in the preseason, missed the whole year, and now another ugly injury that he's back out there competing. Look, I, I, I understand that maybe this hasn't worked out the way that Rams fans wanted it to, considering where he got drafted a year ago. But dude's dude's tough, right? If he's back out there a few days later after having something like that happen, I, I hold that guy in very high regard. Maybe he's you know up to the job. Maybe he's not. But his question isn't in t- isn't in question for me. That that dude showed up and that he's back out there playing football. I think is really impressive. I agree too. And a quick note on Logan Brush, just kind of looking at him the last few days. If you wanted a guard, get a guard. If you wanted to tackle, get a tackle. I think this optionality up and down the offensive line, we'll see how this strategy works. But I think Logan Brush, I'm not sure he's been utilized properly. Of course, he's been injured, but we'll see if he can have some success. I'm wishing this guy isn't labeled Logan Bus. I hate how yeah. closely his last name sounds like Bus because I don't <laughs> think it helps on social media. But <laughs> the last big point, Stafford's lighting it up, man. He is just continuing to look great. Made a fantastic throw to the flat to Puka Nakua. Just outstretched arms over Jonathan Cooper. Later, they had a touchdown. Great connection. Great chemistry building with Puka Nakua. He's been nails during the entire training camp sessions. He's joined practice sessions. And he looks like he's in a groove. I think he's primed and poised to have himself another elite season. Give him a weapon or two and give him a little bit of time. And he's going to do some work. He's really, really good. I know that last year was not good. I know that, but again, throw it away. Th- think about what we know about this guy. In Detroit, he was on a bad football team almost the entire time he was there, but he put up crazy numbers with Calvin Johnson. He was an unbelievably talented quarterback. You finally put him together in an organization with a coach, with a team, with an offensive line, with, with a wide receiver like Cooper Cup and, and some complimentary players as well. What did he do? He won the Super Bowl. When when he's had the pieces, he's one for one, right? When he hasn't had the pieces, it hasn't worked out great, but I don't think it works out great for anybody else. I'm optimistic. He's not old. If he's healthy and they can keep him that way, I think he could have a really big year. Like If they're going to win games, it's going to be because of him and Cooper Cup and, and Aaron Donald, obviously. But he looks great. You know, I'm knocking on my desk right now. I'm knocking on wood. I hope that it stays that way because if he's healthy, all of this long-term strategic plan for continued success may get pushed further back. He may just, he may make it where, you know what? We don't have to do that right now. We can go try to get it done right now, but without him, that's where we are. And how much do you think that Cooper Cup and staff and this offense says, okay, the defense is going to struggle. We're going to lap that score by. I feel like they're looking at their chops to just get up points, get their numbers up, just have fun all year, just really be an explosive offense. Yeah, well, they have no choice, right? It's one of those that if last year's defense 
was okay. It, it, you know, maybe even slightly better than okay, but that was their only choice. So on offense, whether it was with, you know, Matthew Stafford with the bad offensive line or Wolford or Perkins or Mayfield, it was almost just like, just, just keep the thing on the tracks. Don't trick it off too bad with turnovers and everything else. This year, it's going to be, let it hang out. You know, if you throw a few picks, you throw a few picks. It's going to be the price of doing business to try to score 35 points a game. I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see that half of the ball this season. The defense is a big question mark over the top of it, but on offense and a quarterback, let's go. You just got to win, right? Does not matter. If it could be 42 to 41, you just have to win. Like the great Dom Toretto said, it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or mile. Winning is winning, right, Travis? That's exactly. Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> well, uh, they, this season is coming fast and furiously. Opening game is not too far along. It is coming football season. Last preseason game this weekend. But that is going to do it for this episode of Locked On Rams. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. And as always, follow the people's champ mr travis rogers at travis rogers and until next time whose house is locked on ram's house